we all know the power of support vector machine. In this video, I'll explain how sometimes when your data is not linearly separable, support vector machine fails to give you the accurate model. What do we do in that case? We utilize something called as a kernel trick, which kind of takes the data in one extra dimension and kind of creates a linearly separable data for us. What we mean to say by that is what we'll discover in this video. So first let's start by importing all the necessary modules. Apart from the necessary modules, I've also created something called as a listed color map to differentiate between the classes one and zero. In the context of this example, the samples with the target value being equal to zero will be displayed as a red color dot. On the other hand, the samples with the value one would be displayed as green color. And I've saved this color map into a variable called as zero underscore one underscore color map. Where do we utilize this is what we'll discover in the coming functions as well as the code that I kind of walk you through. So let's proceed forward. First things first, I've created a simple function called as plot underscore decision underscore boundary which takes in the x values, the y values and the classifier and helps me plot a decision boundary for that particular classifier that is there. This is the standard way of plotting a decision boundary. So I wouldn't go in depth of explaining the function. This is kind of readily available online as well. So I run the cell to import this function into memory as well. The next thing that I've also done is I've also created a function called as plot underscore 3d underscore plot, which basically takes a two dimensional array with its target variable zero and one. And using some transformations helps you visualize the 2d data by pushing some amount of data into three dimensional space. We'll uncover the magic of this function once we kind of reach at that position. But for now, what I'll do is I'll import the cell into memory so that we can better utilize this function going forward. Once we've imported the necessary functions in memory, we now go into the standard practice of reading the data that we have. Let's go forward with the standard practice of reading the data set. So I have a simple file called as svm underscore data dot xlx, which is a simple Excel file, which I load into my data frame df. Let's visualize the first five rows of my data frame. So as you can clearly see, my data frame has three columns, X1, X2 and Y. X1 and X2 are my feature columns and Y is my target variable having values just zero and one. So it's a binary classification problem that I have. The standard practice going forward in a classification algorithm is to separate out X and Y that is your features and target variable which is what I have achieved in this cell. So I run the cell of splitting the data into X and Y that is features and target variables. Once I've split the data into X and Y, the next step boils down to splitting the data into training and testing, which is what I've achieved using this cell. So when I run the cell, I'll have out of all the training samples that I have, 75% of the data would be used for training and 25% of my data would be used for testing purposes. Now that my data is split into training and testing, let's go on to the whole exercise of model building. So I create an instance of the SVM classifier and also specify the kernel as linear and save it into a variable called as classifier. Now that I've defined the variable classifier, the next thing that I do is I fit the data that is X and Y that is my training data into the classifier. And once the data is fitted into the classifier, I make the predictions using the predict function of the classifier and save the predictions on the test data set that is X test into a variable called as Y underscore pred. So let's run the cell. Now as a standard practice to validate how good your classifier is performing, you have something called as the accuracy score. So let's validate how good our accuracy is. After running the cell, I understand that my classifier accuracy is just 46% which isn't great considering it's a binary classification problem. And given the capabilities that support vector machine has to offer, I expected a better accuracy score. 
so what exactly went wrong before we move on to what exactly went wrong let's also visualize the confusion matrix in order to understand how our classifier is performing so let's run this cell as you can clearly see from my confusion matrix that some of my negative samples that is zero samples are also classified as one so as you can clearly see seven of my samples which were actually zero are classified as one which is a clear case of false positives my true positives are as is so i don't have to worry about the true positive case i don't have true negatives and false negatives in my setup so that is where i have to now visualize the data set to understand where we've gone wrong in the whole process of building this support vector machine model so let's move forward let's now try to understand where our mistake was when we created the support vector machine model let's now plot a scatter plot to understand how our data actually is so as you can clearly see i have two features x1 and x2 and i have a target variable y the green dots signify that these are my positive class samples that is 1 the red dots signify the negative class samples which are 0 so if you notice carefully i cannot draw a simple single line that would separate my class 1 values and class 0 values which is where any linear classifier would fail because my data is not linearly separable so think of it this way i cannot have a vertical line that can separate the two classes neither can i have a horizontal line that can separate the two classes so essentially any linear classifier with any modifications wouldn't be the best possible solution for my underlying data set if i go on to plot the xtest data as well you will observe something similar you can never have one single line that can separate your positive and negative class samples now if you recollect in the starting part of the video i had mentioned that i've created a function that could help you visualize the decision boundary of a classifier so what i do next is i basically plot the decision boundary that i'm getting using the linear svm classifier so let me run this cell so as you can clearly see i have points such as zeros and ones so my zeros are listed with red dots and my ones are listed with green color now my decision boundary is this line that is trying to separate the two classes into zeros and ones so the red region is where all the points would have been classified as zeros the green region is the region where all the points are classified as one so essentially in this case since this is my linear boundary that is separating the two classes or intending to separate the two classes what i observe is all my red points that is all the points which are actually zeros are being classified as one because they lie in the green region so that is why we are going terribly wrong in terms of our accuracy score because all the points which are actually zeros are also being classified as ones so what do we do next in order to make the svm work really accurately svm has an option called as the kernel trick now what kernel trick essentially does is let me first kind of help you visualize the plot and then we can kind of talk more about it so this is a simple three dimensional plot that i've plotted now once you realize that your data is not linearly separable you specify something called as rbf in your kernel which is radial basis function so essentially what it does is it takes your two dimensional data and it projects your two dimensional data into a three dimensional space such that the points which form a cluster are separated by some distance or points which are near together would stay near in the three dimensional or the third dimension that is added so for example we had such a plot in hand which is this scatter plot now essentially these were points which were of class 0 these were the points which were of class 1 so once you apply rbf or radial basis function what it does is essentially it groups the points which are similar together in terms of being collected together and expands it to a new dimension with a different distance so these points are concentrated 
say nearby together so they occupy a specific y location if you consider this as a 3d plot and these red points are scattered together so now they remain at a particular y location itself so now it's able to kind of create something which is linearly separable in a higher dimension as compared to something which was non-linearly separable in a lower dimension so it's added a dimension it's grouped points which are say close together in a different space and thus creating a higher dimensional space which is linearly separable so that is the advantage that you get once you use rbf so this was a small projection that i had in mind in terms of explaining you how say the kernel trick works so there are different kernels which are available one of them is rbf wherein it kind of tries to figure out which are the closest points together and it then translates those points into a particular direction so that you can kind of have linearly separable data in hand now that we've looked at how radial basis function works or the rbf kernel trick works let's now go on to explain this using actual code and see if our accuracy improves or not so let's move forward I follow the same steps that I followed while creating the linear SVM classifier. The only change being now I change the kernel from being linear to RBF which is the radial basis function. I fit my training data that is X train and Y train. I catch hold of the predictions by the classifier's predict function by passing in the X test values and I save the values into a variable called as Y underscore pred. So let me run this cell. Now the cell has executed. So let's go on to calculate the accuracy score. Now since this was like a small data set that I was playing around with, I observe a testing accuracy of 100%. Let me now plot the confusion matrix. As you can clearly see, there are 7 true negatives. That means all the samples which were zeros are now correctly classified as zeros. And all the samples which were 1s are now correctly classified as 1s which we had as 6 samples which are now correctly classified as 1s. So I have true positives, I have true negatives, all of them add up to 13. I have total 13 samples in my testing data set. And I don't observe any false negative and false positive. Now let's go forward and also plot the decision boundary. Now if I plot the decision boundary in two dimensional space, this is what I observe. As you can clearly see, this is more like a circular boundary that's being bounded based on the data that I had provided. So this is how the kernel trick can kind of give you a non-linear boundary in two dimensional space. But think of this non-linear boundary as a linear plane in the three dimensional space. So this was my attempt at explaining how support vector machine gives you that power of creating a very accurate classifier in non-linearly separable data in one dimension and pulling that data into higher dimension and making it linearly separable. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions with what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. If you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone whom you think would find them useful. Please consider clicking the subscribe button to be notified for future videos and thank you so very much for watching the video.